in and drive this accessing. Let's see if it boots. Uh, nope. <laughs> so here we are with our crusty Amiga 1000. I thought the drive for this Amiga was working, but it turns out it is intermittent. I tried cleaning it, then I tried aligning it caveman style, but it didn't work very well. I basically gave up. I hate floppy disks and drives and always wind up going with a GoTech. It does turn out that I don't give up so easily. I had cleaned and demagnetized the heads to no avail. However, it is hard to give up on these classic computers and I thought I should try to give it another shot. I thought I would use this opportunity to learn how to align the heads using an oscilloscope. Many people have used software to do this, but software can only see what the machine code sends it. This is not a very accurate way to align a drive. What I am looking for is closer to a manufacturer's QA method of drive alignment to maximize the drive's ability to read disks, even when they are worn or poorly written to. There's obviously there's two different ways you can adjust the track alignment. You can simply reposition the track zero sensor and the alternative would be to rotate the motor assembly, the, the track motor assembly. They would do the exact same thing because all you're doing is in one case you're telling the, the drive where position track zero is so you'd be skewing the whole, all 80 tracks. Um, and, and that's what you're doing when you're adjusting this. You're skewing all 80 tracks. So you can choose to, basically I think the way that's designed to do, because it's difficult to adjust the track zero sensor, is to, you know, like when they in installed it and calibrated it, well they just locked in the track zero sensor and then they use this because this has a nice circular adjustment, rotational adjustment. This is actually what was used to calibrate it. Um, I was in the process of doing oscilloscope tests on it. Here's my oscilloscope probe. What's nice about this Amiga 1000 drive is I don't, a lot of the drives have test points that are underneath. Uh, these drives have them, I looked at it underneath and it's got, oh, it's got the test points underneath. Well, as it turns out, they're on the top too. <laughs> they're in fact they're even larger. And uh, I, I brought my I, I I got my other Amiga 1000, my personal Amiga 1000 drive out just to have something to compare it to. And these ones have the test points on, but they're filled in with solder. This one here, the one that was you know dirty, not working, um, it actually doesn't have any solder in there, so the holes are empty and I can just stick my probe in there. I don't have to solder any test pins on it or whatever. So that's pretty convenient. You're not going to find, uh, you're not going to get that lucky. It's just, it's just uh, face reality. So I put a GoTech in the DF0 position and the faulty drive is in the DF1 position using an external adapter. And uh, hopefully I have Amiga test kit uh, selected. Yes. Okay. All right, so now I tried to use diagram. Diagram would be the most ideal way to do this because you're booting off of a ROM and you don't, you just need the, the malfunctioning drive. You don't need a second drive. You don't need an external adapter. You can just grab a 500, Mega 500 and plug one of these bad drives into it and load up Diagram in the ROM socket. The floppy drive uh, tests don't really work on an Amiga 500, as near as I can tell. So that's not real convenient. Um, anyway, so Amiga Test Kit has some, some tests. So we can uh, select our DF1. It says there's nothing in there, but I, I've tried this before and I can get it to turn on. So I got to put a disc in it, that would help. Okay, and we can turn the motor on. 
and when we turn the motor on we've got a signal so we're on uh, AC coupling I think hello yeah we're on AC coupling and um, let's do that again turns off after a while so this is our signal from test point one and we're out of focus um, we're at our division is 10 millivolts per division so and we're centered so we're getting a we're getting a sine wave basically or you know triangle wave or whatever um, and it looks to be about 10 millivolts 20 the whole spread is 20 if you consider the positive and the negative so if we we can go vertically up you know bring it up here that's probably a little bit easier so actually that's uh what is that we, if we do it more we can see better what it is it's pretty much maxed out there so we're at two millivolts per division so two four six seven millivolts of a sweep Let's check out test point two. Do that without messing anything up. Okay, and test point two, we're a little bit higher. Um, no, we're about the same. We're about the same. Yeah. So. I think there are two test points because, and correct me if I'm wrong, one is for the top head and the other is for the bottom head. I don't show it in this video, but sometimes you need to adjust the top head alignment relative to the bottom head. From what I have seen, the bottom head is fixed, so you would start by aligning the bottom head using the track adjustments I'm about to show, then adjust the top head to match the bottom. A two-channel oscilloscope would help with this. An educated guess would be that test point one would be the bottom head, you could verify this by loosening the top head and move it around to see which test point has the change. I think I may have had the 1x, 10x adjustment wrong on my scope, so take my specific readings with a grain of salt. It doesn't matter anyway, simply adjust until you get the strongest signal. So here we see a backup of Typhoon Thompson with read errors. I think the first thing to do is to see what Amiga Test Kit says about the alignment. Then we will switch to the oscilloscope to check it and make adjustments. That should provide a good example of the limitations when using only software to align a floppy drive. So what is this head calibration test before I go any farther? Okay, we can go to different cylinders. Uh, we can just go to the middle and the end. It says it's okay, but uh, hmm. yeah, I don't know about that. So use an Amiga DOS disk written in a well calibrated drive. Adjust drive until 11 valid sectors are found on both sides. Um, hmm. Keep in mind, I still have the Typhoon Thompson disk in the drive. And this software says the alignment is fine, but we know it's not. So I should be able to mess it up. Okay, I've got it cranked all in one direction. I don't, yeah. Oh, there we go. We did mess it up. Missing. Yeah, that's not an ideal test, but um, yeah, 
Wow, I'm really getting a strong signal there. Let me see. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. So uh, it still thinks it's okay, but I'm I'm back. I'm at five uh, five millivolt sweep. I'm at five millivolts on the top and negative five on the bottom, so a ten millivolt sweep. But I can get that up, can I? If I move it, oops, wrong way. I can move it way up. That's too far, maybe. Look at that right there. I'm liking that. And I got it where I've got a stronger signal than I've ever had. This is 5 millivolts per division, so I'm at 5, 10, 15. I, I've doubled, I've basically doubled my signal strength on this particular disc. Here, here's an original disc that, um, it's the Amy Alignment System disc, which I could be using that for the same purpose. But let's see if we have a... Um, Oh yeah, no, we're good. That's, I mean, that's pretty strong. So you want 15, something approaching 15. Now this is going back and forth. Um, you know, so 5, 10, call it 13 to 17. 13 to 17 pulses. 13 pulse and a 17 pulse. So mill, then this is millivolts. So, wow, okay. Now, uh, this disc just had a read-write error. So let's try to... Uh, I wish I had Workbench 1. I have to switch the drives. That's a pain. But I may have aligned this pretty well. Let's, let me switch drives and we'll see. Okay. Uh, Typhoon Thompson had read-write errors before. But this is a perfect test case of how to align a drive because it was out of alignment and hopefully now we are doing better. Yeah, so this is definitely stronger than what we had. So we're at 5, 10, yeah, you know, like maybe 12 or something at the low point and going all the way up to 15 at the high point. Yeah, this, this game does that. It, it stops for a while and then... You have to be patient. I think it comes up and says Cortex on the screen, if I'm not mistaken. I've used this game to test a lot of things. Yeah, there it is. Cortex! Missed it. Okay, well, that's how to align an Amiga floppy drive using an oscilloscope. An Amiga test kit. Thanks for joining me, friends.